Hello folks, welcome. It is Tuesday, May the 19th. And uh, I just threw these two actually yesterday, yesterday evening. And um, so this is uh, seven pounds. There may be a bit of wind noise out there from the wind. I hope it won't be too bad. Yeah, I'm trying my hand at some bigger pots uh, to stretch myself a bit because well, you need to, don't you, once in a while. You need to make something a little bigger. So, here goes. This clay is, is actually quite nice, it's not too hard, it's not too soft, it's just about right. So I'm breaking in I'm going to use my my pin tool, my needle tool just to just to give me some idea of the thickness which is not a bad idea to do with a bigger piece of clay with smaller, smaller ware that one is throwing, you can gauge the thickness, but sometimes with a bigger piece of clay, it's... Good idea. Yeah, it's quite a wind out there getting up. Very warm weather we're having. It can't be can't be typical for the date we're at. So as you notice as I'm lifting, I'm lifting using, I'm using my knuckle. Now you'll see me usually using my fingers. And for smaller, for smaller work, work, you know, your fingers is good. But when you're trying to lift more weight of clay, a knuckle lift is, is better really. Let's just check we're in the picture. 
Are we in the picture? Yes, we are. Good. Yeah, and another thing you'll notice is that when I do the lift, I don't go all the way to the top. I just stop below, you see. And that leaves a little bit of thickness here on the, on the top, which... which we want, you see, for later. It's easy to get find yourself short of clay, isn't it, when you get to the, the last. So your, another thing you may notice is Wheel speed is not really very fast. You want to avoid high wheel speed. I see so many people throwing uh, at too fast a speed, to my mind. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I keep it in at the top. Okay, don't let it don't let it get wider and wider because it, it has a tendency to want to go wider, doesn't it? So I'm going to use a rib actually in this case to my overall is so I'm going to hold this rib, you see, and I'm going to put it in position. And I'm going to push the clay to the rib and then keep pushing it and bring the rib up, you see, as I go. So pushing, pushing in there, pushing the clay to the rib, and then lifting the rib and my hand up at the same time, you see. You'll take off a bit of clay as you go. Don't worry about that. Make sure you've got the inside of the pot lubricated as well as the outside. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea, folks, just to get yourself off the wheel, you know, and have a look at what you're doing because you may not be seeing it. You know, I'm not using a mirror because this is like is a bigger piece and the mirrors for smaller stuff, really. So so I'm, I'm always looking for the shape, you see, trying to find, to see the shape, to see if the shape is in harmony. You see, I think of shapes like musical notes. Is the shape in tune? Ask yourself that question. Is the shape in tune? Because you don't want an out of tune shape, do you? So now you see at this point, that extra bit of clay that I left at the top, 
I'm I'm grateful to have it there because I I I need it, you see. See, it's all about tricks. <laughs> Tricks of the trade. Don't forget to take any water out of the bottom of your pot. If you haven't got a sponge stick, get one or make one useful. Uh. And don't forget to leather. Keep the rim of your pot leathered when you finish because it it strengthens the rim of the pot, you see. It it smooths it, makes it stronger. If you take a sponge to the lip of your pot, you're bringing all the grog and sand to the surface. You don't want to be doing that. So just going to use my throwing stick just to finish the base here. These pots will be trimmed. Watch Simon, you mean you actually do trim your pots? I thought you said you... <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Uh, these kind of pots will be trimmed. Let's just drop the camera down a little and uh, so you can see you might think it looks smaller than the other two, but it's only distance. It's actually it's about the same size. I'm not really measuring them, but it's about the same size. I'm just actually thinking about the shape. You see, where I've got the point of the belly is I'm thinking just a little bit lower than what I want. I want to lift it up half an inch. So, I better do that now. That's why it's so important, you see, to get off your wheel and fine-tune it because we want that Oops. stuck my ribbon in. We want the form to sing. <laughs> Do your pot sing? <laughs> sing in tune. Okay. Get these tools out of the way. Take my wire. Cut him off. Wipe my hands. It's going to take a piece of newspaper um, and put it over the top here, you see. Put it all the way around like that. 
let's just bring the camera there a minute, I just want to show you this because it's actually useful. You see I put the bit of newspaper there but if you put the bit of newspaper there on the top and then just touch it lightly with your finger until you see that, that damp ring appear. Okay, so then now when I, when I grab the pot from underneath and lift it, that bit of paper will stick on there, it's like a, like a drum, you know, and it'll trap the air inside and that'll enable me to just lift it off with my hands without, without, without deforming it, you see. So, here goes. And then you carefully peel it off, you see. Now, any, any mark from the newspaper here, that's no big deal. Just a piece of bit of water with your finger like that, you see. Make it all nice again. Okay. Well, there it is. There's the three kind of jars there. Um, Thank you for joining us folks and um, we want to say a big hello to all those people at the, at the Clay Studio in Philadelphia where I was this last week. In fact, uh, I think it was today, today week past, last Tuesday, I was with, um, with Tomu Hamada whose grandson of Shoji Hamada, and we're, we're both grandsons, you see, of well-known potters. So we were having this, like, get-together, sort of reunion-type, making the family connection, etc. And uh, that went off very well, and uh, was a kind of one-off event. Anyway, it was, it was nice to, to, to be able to do that, to sort of renew a little bit of of link between Japan and and our family. For those of you who don't know, my grandfather was a well-known potter, Bernard Leach. Anyway, um, so that was good. But now, of course, it's back to the studio and back to making. And uh, so, have a go at doing something a bit bigger. This is seven pounds. It will be trimmed afterwards. Think about your pots think about the shapes of your pots and ask yourself are my shapes in tune do my pots sing all right because you really want to make pots that sing and um, so have a go and you'll find that you know making bigger pots slightly you can work up to it you see maybe Maybe you're used to, used to making a couple of pounds. Well, well, let's stretch yourself to four pounds and do a few like that and then stretch yourself a bit further, maybe six pounds, eight pounds, ten pounds. And you'll, you'll expand your throwing capacity, your ability, you see. But you don't want to go from a two pound straight to a ten pound because you might find you have some difficulty. So just work up to it. It doesn't take long, but once you know the basics, once you know how to throw, really throwing a big pot is the same, it's just a little on a bigger scale, you see. But just stretch yourself and see how you go. Thanks for joining us, please visit my website simonleachpottery.com and you'll see workshops there, tools, etc. And um, above all, keep practicing, that's the secret. Thanks for joining us folks, see you soon, bye bye.